Your name is free. Your name. 
tonight is the beginning of a very, very significant night for us as a church. And before I, before I, I speak tonight, I want to I pray. Because I believe that what God is beginning right now is only the seed of what He's about to do. And I know that every time, every time you give seed to God, God always multiplies it. There's something about seed in my hand that doesn't multiply, but seed in God's hand always multiplies. And the Bible tells us that when two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, that there He is. Well, wherever Jesus is, something powerful is about to happen. I'm here to prophesy to somebody tonight. Somebody's going to walk out healed tonight. Somebody's going to walk out delivered tonight. Somebody's family is going to have a breakthrough tonight. Some, somebody's going to walk out of here uh, healed and whole, walked and depressed, but they're going to leave full of the joy of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that tonight, give God a shout. Amen. And I believe God's about to move in power. So I want to prophesy. I want you to close your eyes. Lord, this is a holy moment. Lord, I know that with all of our efforts and all of our preparation, Lord God, that Lord God, unless you show up, nothing changes. So I'm asking, Lord God, on behalf of this church, that every heart would be open and receptive. I'm praying, Lord God, that previous uh, setbacks would become a setup for a comeback. I'm praying, Lord God, that what you begin now, Lord God, as we come together, that Lord God, it would produce a wave, an explosion of a move of God like we've never seen, like we've never known, like the world has not experienced in the name of Jesus. I declare this over forward, church, over every location, not just the ones that are represented here, but every location. God, I declare your power. God, I declare your favor. God, I declare your supernatural blessing to accelerate like we've never known before. And we give you all the glory and all the praise in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. And if you believe that tonight, somebody give God a great big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. It's been so nice to see you all. I mean, how exciting is it just to be in our own building? Come on. Our own building, our own church where we can gather together. We don't have to pack in, pack out. We don't have to hire people. We, don't, we, we get to come together for our own conference. And I tell you what, looking around the room tonight, I, I have a feeling this room is going to be too small for next year's conference. And over this past period of time, as we've been praying, preparing for this night, as we've been preparing for this conference, we knew that it was going to be more than just a gathering of people, but it was going to be a declaration. And that's why we called it forward together. Somebody shout together. I want you to know something powerful happens when God's people come together. There's something powerful about togetherness. And these last three years, there's been an, an agenda, an assignment to isolate us, to take the praise out of the church. Oh, I tell you what, I was so excited. I didn't know half of those songs, but I was jumping and excited anyway. Because this is something about being in the company of like-minded believers praising God. I mean, I can praise God at home, and that's good. That's fine. That's wonderful. It's, we need to do that. I can pray at home too. That's good. That's fine. We need to do that. But something powerful happens when all of us get together. And, and it's like iron sharpening iron, one man building up another person. Something powerful happens when we get together corporately. And we come together. And tonight, I, wanna, I don't want to speak long tonight, but I do want to share some thoughts with you. And if you have a Bible, I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 2, and verse 1. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. We're going to read to verse 6. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together. Somebody shout together. They were all together in one place. Suddenly, somebody shout Suddenly. Suddenly, a, a, a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were uh, sitting. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And they were filled. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in, in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, they were, uh, they were dwelling in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under the earth. And when they heard this sound, 
A crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking their own language. I want you to know that when, when God's people gather together, people outside on the streets get to hear about it. But when God's people get together, something powerful begins to happen. See, togetherness is, is, is actually the nature of God. In the book of Genesis, uh, you know, God says, He says, let us make man in our image. God is a triune God. He is a together God. God doesn't fly solo. And so togetherness is in the nature and in the, in the heart of God. Did you know that you can do more together with other people than you could ever do by yourself? You notice that when you see birds fly, you, you'll notice you'll see them flying in a V formation. You'll very rarely see, see uh, birds fly long distances by themselves. Why? Because they need each other to get to the place that is their destination. I need you to know something tonight. You need the person next to you tonight. You need the person behind you tonight. You need every single one that God's put in your company because you can't make it on your own. In fact, when birds fly in that V formation, they go 40% further. That's right. You, they 40% more effective. Imagine what would happen if we as believers decided, hey, I'm not going to fly solo anymore. Hey, it's not about my song. It's not about, you know, whether the coffee's good or not. It's not about whether I can park or not. It's not about whether it's hot or cold. It's none of that. What about if we just decided together and get together under the name of Jesus together? And I don't care what songs we sing. Truth is, I don't know half of them anyway. But it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what the song is. It matters who we're singing it to. And when we come together, something powerful happens in our togetherness. You know, over 30 times the Bible uses the phrase one another. One another. It's always about togetherness. It's not just about one. And my concern has been over these last few years that we've had a lot of Christians even start to fly solo. Have become discouraged. Maybe disappointed. disappointed. Maybe it's just too hard. Can I encourage you tonight? I know that I know we get this because we're all together in this room. But can I encourage us all as believers? Let's be committed to being together. Yeah, look, we have an online service. That's fine. But but if you can be in the room, then be in the room together because something powerful happens when you're in the room together. I think that's okay if you can't get there. And I know people tell me when they're working, they, they watch the service online. And I get that. I think that's absolutely fine and wonderful. But that cannot be a replacement for the coming together and being in the presence of our other like-minded believers. Somebody shout amen tonight. So you can be good by yourself, but you'll never be great by yourself. You'll never be great by yourself because that's not the way that God did it. I mean, you know, uh, that, that's, that's why I chose to marry this beautiful woman here. Because when I was single, I didn't know what I was thinking. I, 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 I wasn't a stud muffin like I am now. Don't laugh too loud. But then I married her and she made me better. I married her and, and she started to hammer out all the, you know, all the flaws of my character, which I hear about every day. She began to make decisions for me. Wow, I didn't know far out. And I knew that's why I got married, so I didn't have to make any more decisions for myself. But what happens is that when two people get together, they make each other better. When you're, when you're in the company of like-minded believers, that's why I love that song we, uh, that we sung at the beginning. I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to say goodbye to my old friends. Some of us got to say goodbye to our old friends. And we got to embrace new friends because we got to get along in this thing together. Somebody shout together. So when we come together as a body of believers, united in faith, there's something that happens that you cannot get on your own. We draw strength from one another. I'm encouraged looking at all your beautiful faces. I can't be encouraged at home by myself watching it on TV. But we draw strength from one another. I mean, look at this beautiful worship team. Oh my gosh, have you ever seen a more beautiful team? It was like, you know, every nation on the, on the world, in the world, represented up here. And it was beautiful. Well, why was it beautiful? Because they were singing in harmony together. They were singing an A chord. And when we get around people who, and we, we're in an A chord in the same accord, 
then something powerful, something magical happens. But well, we must be committed to being together. Oh, I like doing it on my own. Yeah, you probably do. But you'll never achieve greatness doing it on your own. We need each other. In fact, turn to five people around, around you and say, I need you and you need me. Together, forward together, we are coming together. And tonight there are a few points that I want to leave you, a few thoughts that I want to leave you as it relates to our togetherness. Number one, together releases protection. Being together releases protection. There's something about two of us together looking out for one another. It releases protection. There's something about the church body, the, the church congregations being together. What, what, what happens is we're protecting one another. It's like I, if I see that you're, you're falling down, then I'm going to stop and I'm going to help you up. Well, you can't, you can't be protected when you're in isolation. You can only be t- protected when we're together. Together releases protection. Did you know that penguins, penguins uh, survive in sub-zero temperatures? And you know what they do is, in order for them to stay warm and to survive, they go all the little penguins, and they and they put their feathers together. That's why when you see often in like you know uh, National Geographic or whatever it is or Discovery Channel, penguins are often always together, and they're like right next to each other, right next to each other. They put their backs to one another, and what happens is their feathers begin to heat each other up. So, so it could be sub-zero out in the snow, but when they, when they get together, in fact, some, somebody said that 70, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, I don't, know, I don't know what that is, Celsius, that's how warm it is in the back there. Well, well imagine if one little penguin decided, oh, nah, I want to go over here by myself. Imagine one little penguin decided, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. I don't, I don't really like you. I don't like these other penguins. Can you imagine? Well, if that one little penguin decides to go off and be on his own, own lonesome, then it won't be too long before that penguin will go to penguin heaven. Because it's the togetherness that brings protection. When we are planted in the house of the Lord, we prosper. Blessed are those who are planted beside streams of living water. And everything they do, they shall prosper. When you're planted in the house of God, faithful, serving, giving, uh, contributing, there's protection for you. And I know this to be absolutely true in my life. I know that a part of the reason of the blessing of the Lord on my life was not because of me. But it was because the, of, of my, my, my parents and my grandparents who went before me. There is a canopy of grace that comes over us when we're planted in the house of the Lord. See, there's something about the togetherness that is so powerful because together releases protection. Number two, together releases creativity. I gotta say I'm incredibly humbled walking in tonight. Because I walked in and everything's amazing. I didn't I, I, I didn't know what songs we were doing. I've never seen that opening. I haven't seen any of it. But what happens is it took a whole bunch of people coming together. It took the release of different people's creativity. I was out the back there, I went to take a photo at the photo booth. I looked at that. I thought, wow, this is awesome. Who did that? And it was Azzy next to me. She says, I did it. And Annalena. Wow. I could never do anything like that. You know why? Because when we're together and we release people in their togetherness, then that togetherness brings creativity. This praise and worship team, another classic example. But together releases creativity. Psalms 133 says, where two or three come together in unity, 
God commands a blessing. See, when we're gathered in unity together and together, God commands a blessing. Did you hear it? It doesn't say He suggested a blessing. It doesn't, it doesn't say that He thought about giving you a blessing. He commanded it. He commanded blessing. See, when we come together in unity, God orders that there will be blessing on your life, blessing on your children, blessing on your job, blessing on your business, blessing on your school. When we are together in togetherness, God commands the blessing. He commands it. Just like my wife when she speaks to me at home. But togetherness releases creativity. You think about the fact that reproduction happens as a result of togetherness. I can't have a baby by myself. It's funny how men say we're having a baby because we're not having a baby at all. She's having the baby. But there's a togetherness and that togetherness releases creativity. Is this helping anybody? Okay, two people. Thank you very much for your spirit of encouragement. No, you're awesome. The next point is, together releases a spirit of joy. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. At His right hand, treasures ever, evermore. I just love being at the front tonight, looking at all these young people jumping up and down. How amazing is that? And then I walk around saying, who's that? Who's that? Oh, they've been coming to the church for ages. I'm like, oh, thanks. What a good pass I am. But the point is that togetherness releases joy. When we're together, we're happy together. Last weekend, I was at a wedding for uh, TK and Shekinah. And it was amazing. And my wife did her first wedding. She, did, she took, took the wedding. And it was amazing. What, what, what made it amazing? It was a special occasion, absolutely. It was a wonderful location, yes, absolutely. But the part that made it joyful was the fact that we were just together. We were together eating, laughing, dancing, doing hakas. So one of the guys gets up to do a speech, and he says, uh, he says okay, we're going to do a haka because the, uh, uh, the, Wallab the Wallabies rugby team were staying in the same hotel. We're going to do a haka, and then he says, every man come up. Well, you know, I'm not really kind of, I... every man come up. So, you know, I just sit there, and I'm hoping that not every man's going to go up. At least if one other man sits there, then I can sit, oh, I'm just with him. Well, every single man stands up. Phyllis turns to me and says, Pastor Dan, you can't just sit there. You better get up there. Get up there. And then, and then of course, you know, the guy doing it, I want Pastor Dan at the front. Oh, no, 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 you don't. No, you don't. I pushed Rob in front of me. I went and hit in the back. But the point is, the reason we, it was a joyful time was because we were together. Being together, seeing each other's beautiful faces brings joy. It's better than sitting at home watching it on TV. But there's something about the value of being together being in the house of the Lord on a Sunday, making that a priority, to be in the house of the Lord. I remember many years ago, I was speaking to, to this Malaysian pastor because his kids were growing up and, and worship leaders. And I said, how did you get your kids? How did you get your kids to be so on fire for God? He said, I took them to church every single Sunday. He said, I prayed for them every night when they, when they were asleep. He says, those were the days when we had four hours long services. He said, I put them to sleep underneath the chairs. Parents, there's something valuable about bringing your kids into the house of the Lord. As long as they are under your roof, then bring them to the house of the Lord. The Bible says, train a child on the way they should go. When they grow old, they won't depart from it. But what, we, what are we doing? What are we doing in an environment like this? We're, we're modeling an example of what to do. We're creating an environment of praise and worship. I grew up in the kind of church where the kids weren't at the front, the kids were at the back. You couldn't talk. The reason you couldn't talk because there was a teacher with a big stick next to you. But that's not the kind of house we're building. 
We're building a house for all generations. We're building a house where our children and our children's children can flourish and prosper. Together releases a spirit of joy. Number four, together releases healing. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, Hebrews 11. And not give up meeting together, some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Togetherness releases healing. When we're together, somebody said a a burden shared is a burden halved. When we're together in one another's company, that togetherness brings healing, releases healing. Togetherness is the antidote to loneliness. We have more devices and we are more connected today than we've ever been in the history of civilization. And yet we have more loneliness than we've ever had. We have more rates of depression than we've ever had. Well, I put it to you, maybe, just maybe, it's because we just spend so much time on these devices, texting one another while we're sitting in the same room. Maybe, just maybe we should put the thing down and have a conversation. together releases healing. Number five, together releases the power of God. The Bible says this, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place and suddenly, suddenly, a sound like a mighty rushing wind poured out from heaven and touched every person in the room and filled them. See, when we're together under the name of Jesus, when we're together lifting up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, when we are together under that banner, together releases the power of God. It's released. Our prayer during this conference is not that you would come and be excited. Our prayer is that you would come and you would have an encounter. Our prayer is not that you would come and leave the same. Our prayer is that you would not leave impressed with with lights or, or music or preachers or anything like that. But our prayer is that you would walk away with a deeper sense of conviction filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus standing up on the inside of you that you can walk out of this room knowing that you've touched God. Well, my friends, when we come together under that name, when we come together and worship, that's why I love the worship so much. I love the fact that a worship comprises of our different locations. When we come together and worship God, God can't help but turn up. Because together releases the power of God. See, I believe that there are some people in this room And you're going to have a suddenly moment during this conference. Maybe you've been praying and asking God for many years. Maybe you've been believing God for a breakthrough in your family, in your health, in your life. Maybe maybe I don't know what's going on in your life. But I know this, when they were together, suddenly God answered. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe you prayed that prayer before and it didn't come through. Well, I want to tell I want to encourage you, keep coming together and keep praying because suddenly God's gonna move. I'm believing for suddenlies in people's health. I'm believing for suddenlies in people's bank accounts. I'm believing for suddenlies in people's uh, people's workplaces. I'm believing for suddenlies in the name of Jesus. I'm believing for suddenly uh, souls getting saved in your family. I'm believing for suddenly. I want to know if there's anybody else in this room who's believing God for a suddenly of the Holy Ghost. That only happens when we're together. And when we come together, God releases the suddenly. Final thought. The worship team can join me. Together changes the world. together changes the world. If Christ is alive in your life, He didn't just come to make your world better. He he does that. He will do that. He always does that. 
But it's not just about your world. It's about the world. It's not just about your life. It's about the lives of others that God has given you influence with. It's not just about what He's done in you. But imagine what He could do in your friend. Imagine what He could do in your child. Imagine what God could do in your parent. Can you imagine what God could do? Because I know this to be absolutely true. The gospel was not meant to be confined to a building. The gospel was never meant, meant to be limited to walls. That's why when the Holy Spirit fell on this day, everybody outside could hear what was happening in the church. Well, I want to declare a day that people outside would hear what God is doing in the church. And together, changes the world. What started with 12 men in Jerusalem, that 12 became 70. That 70 became 120. That gospel has continued to be preached and souls been saved. To now on planet Earth, one in three people on the planet, seven billion people would confess or profess to be a believer in Jesus Christ. How did that happen? Because they were smart enough? No. How did it happen? Because they were they had the right opportunities? No. Did they come from the right postcode? No. Did they have the right pedigree? No. Were any of them Bible college trained? No. It happened because a company of 12 young disciples got together with a Jesus who changed their world. And they knew that they couldn't go back to living life the way they did. And from that day on, the moment they met Jesus, those 12 men, decided to believe in a God who was for them than a world that was against them. Those 12 men chose to minimize the voice of self and elevate and escalate the voice of God. These 12 men decided, I'm not going to spend another day being down about myself. I, I, I'm not going to spend another day uh, uh, speaking ill of myself because if I speak ill of myself, I'm speaking contrary to the Word of God. God, there's nothing about you that God doesn't love. There's nothing about you that God can't save. There's nothing you've done. There's nowhere you've been that would cause you to lose grace, that would cause you to lose your salvation. It is impossible. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what you've done. And I don't care where you've been. I don't care who you've done it with. God's grace is enough. And if He touches your world, touches mine is because together changes the world I grew up in a place called Camden's Creek yeah none of you probably even heard of that actually no actually a few, few feet down nothing good ever comes out of Camden's Creek they said of Jesus no, nothing good ever comes out of that's a lie by the way nothing good comes out of Nazareth well I'll tell you what Maybe why don't you decide to be the first? Don't ever doubt, friends, that a company of a small company of committed people could change the world. Because history tells us that it is indeed the only thing that has ever changed the world. A small company of like-minded believers could change the world. Can you imagine in this room, we've got hundreds of people in, in this room. Could you imagine hundreds of people being together? Could you imagine what God could do? Could you imagine the impact we could see God have if we decided together to see God change the world? And I want to encourage you, friend. God wants to use you. Back, repeat it after me. Say, God wants to use me. I am enough because He is enough. God can do it in me, even if I don't believe it. His word says it, and I believe it, and I receive that today. Together.
Why don't you just do this? Two fingers. Three fingers. Four fingers. Five fingers. Are you getting it? One finger. Two fingers. Three. exceedingly, abundantly, above, beyond, all we can ask, think, or imagine. Somebody shout together. Together. Together we are stronger. Together we are healed. Together we experience the power of God. Together we see God move suddenly and together we can change the world. If you receive that tonight, somebody give God a great big shout of praise all over this room. pray for you today. Father, I just thank you for this incredible church, this incredible company of people. I'm praying, Lord God, at at this time that you'd be present, that Lord God, I'm praying that your, your, your life and that your hope, Lord God, would resonate in every heart, in every home, upon every family. I declare that in Jesus' precious name, everybody said, amen. Well, amen. God bless you. Have the most incredible day. Have the most incredible new year. God bless you.